as we are on the freeway of the show today. We're going down the interstate, Jason. We got, you know, football and all kinds of stuff to talk about. But I see an exit. We're going to take it right now. The uh, The Shredville exit mm-hmm. is, a, is upon us. Yeah. Which means it's time every week to talk UC Davis Aggies football with uh, our friend, Coach Tim Plow. Coach, it's Dave and Jason. Good morning. Boys, how we doing? I'm in Shredville, brother. I'm yeah. doing great. Oh, yeah. Hey, congrats, Coach. First win. Mm-hmm. First win as a coach. What, Thanks, did, yep. it's, uh, did you get the game ball? Good to get a win. I did get a game ball. Yeah, I, I uh, didn't know what to do with it. We uh, we played. We won the game and didn't play great. So that's always kind of a uh, unique feeling. But like I told them, uh, I'd rather have a dirty win than a clean loss. You know. Speaking of, were you at any point doused with Gatorade or some other beverage? And if not. Does that say something about the locker room and their loyalty <laughs> to the coach? Your thoughts? <laughs> I uh, I think that I think that they knew that I was uh, not in the best moods. Uh, ah. so I think they knew a Gatorade a Gatorade probably wasn't going to help. You know, would be my would be my assumption. So I, I appreciate their uh, they read the room really well. <laughs> um, well, I guess as a coach, you always want the best performance, but knowing that you still got the victory. How do you think you won this game, particular coach, without you know the best performance by the Aggies? Well, I think um, there's still some things we did really well. You know, I thought offensively, uh, you know, our quarterback played really well. Miles, he uh, you know threw for over 300 yards and was really efficient. And you know, we were able to get the ball to Land Laris in a bunch, and he ran for over 100 yards. And then defensively, uh, you know, we stopped the run. They only had I think that minus nine yards rushing. Um, and we, you know, our field goal kicker did a good job making kicks and we, and we forced some turnovers defensively, which was good. I think, uh, the negatives were we just in the red zone offensively, we, we couldn't get touchdowns. So we kicked too many field goals and kept it close. And then, and then defensively, we, uh, we struggled against the pass. And so they got hot late there and, and uh, kept it close. So, um, so some good, some good stuff too, that we did. I think that, that, if we can continue doing those things, that's a good winning football. Coach, uh, I want to go back as uh, Coach Tim Plow joins us. Uh, I want to go back to what you just said about, you know, when I was joking about the Gatorade and, and you said they, they kind of knew uh, I wasn't too happy. So, you know, Jason and I, who've never coached anything before, really, if you lose, you know, you think you go in the locker room, you're like, you guys, come on, you suck. Let's do better. And you win. And it's like, hey, everybody, you're awesome. Let's go. High fives and one, two, three break and all that stuff like you see in the movies. But it, I, I've seen this in great coaches before. There, it, it seems like there is a um, a psychology to when they think you're going to hammer them, you build them up. And when they think you're going to praise, over praise them and it's happy, happy joy, that's maybe when you nitpick a little bit more and go for what didn't happen as a new coach, but somebody who's been around coaching for a long time, am I overthinking it or is there a bit of a psychology to that for you? No, I think you hit it right on the head. I think, uh, I think the important thing is it's really about how well we play. And, and we've tried to make that message pretty consistent from when I got here, but I learned that, you know, from the guys that coached here from Bob Biggs and from Jim Soaker and those guys, like it's really just about how well we play. And if our performance isn't positive, then uh, at the end of the day, I really, I really don't look at the result of the game because I just want them to play their best. And they know that That, that's very clear. So I think, um, you know, there's going to be times where we play really well and maybe lose. And there's going to be times where we, don't play great and win. And I just want the message to be consistent and that it's about how well we play way more than any result that we could, you know, look at, you know, coach at the end, you know, the game seemingly was in hand. You're scoring more, like you said, you're getting maybe more field goals than you wanted instead of touchdowns, but now you're tested. I mean, they've got the ball, they get a fourth down commerce is driving with just a one possession game. Uh, you then get the pick six and basically, you know, end the game. But what kind of value do you think that has early in the season, you know, getting tested and having to come up with uh, finding a way to get the W? Yeah, I think that is, I think that is important. And uh, we did talk about that as a team and that at the end of the day, uh, you found a way to win the game and 
and you found a way to win at home. And, you know, if you want to be a great team, you got to win your home mm-hmm. games. Um, and so to be able to win a home game where, uh, where you do get tested and you got to make a play late and, and we do, yeah, I do think you can learn a lot from that and you can gain some confidence. Um, so definitely excited that they, um, were able to dig deep and figure out a way to get that done. Cause again, I think, I think a good team is going to find a way to win when they don't play their best. Um, and I think that's what we were able to show, you know, last weekend. Coach Tim Plow, UC Davis Aggies joining us on your home of the Aggie Satown Sports. Uh, Co- Coach, I don't want to read too much into this, but I, I was looking at the schedule, and I, I noticed you have Southern Utah coming up in Utah. By the way, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, I hate Southern Utah. <laughs> I hate them so much, so I, I hope you beat their ass. So you, you have back-to-back Southern Utah and then home Utah Tech. And then I started looking, and I went, wait a minute. They're at Cal, home last week, at Southern Utah, then you have two home games, then at home, at home, at home, and then the Causeway Classic. Uh, I don't know. Would you, is that a good setup for you? I mean, you're literally, you're alternating home and road pretty much the entire season. You don't have multiple road games in a row. Would you rather have a chunk and get the roadies out of the way? Or do you like the fact that you got an alternating schedule basically this year? I I like the alternating schedule. I think you're right. I mean, I think anytime, you know, we don't feel like we're not away from home for multiple weeks. Um, is important. And, you know, thankfully for us, you know, I think right now we got four of the teams in the big sky are ranked ahead of us. You know, we play all four of them and, uh, you know, one of them's right across the causeway and the other three, I think two of those games we get to play at home. So, um, you know, as, as daunting of a schedule as the big sky is, I love the fact that we don't have back to back games and, some of these places because some of these places are tough to get to. I mean, uh, I don't, it sounds like you're not a big Cedar city fan, uh, but that's, that's, that's not an easy trip boys. I mean, uh, you know, not exactly a destination well-traveled here. So some of these trips are pretty difficult. Uh, you don't want to do them back to back weeks if you can avoid it. Yeah. How about uh, Southern Utah coach? They, they probably are, I, I wouldn't say looking forward to playing you guys because you guys are a ranked team, but They've had to play up twice, and they haven't played at the FCS level. What's your thoughts as you prepare for for Southern Utah this week? Yeah, we're they're, they're coming off a big win. They just upset a uh, an FBS team and beat UTEP, which is always a big moment for uh, you know an FCS program. They uh, they are extremely physical, extremely well coached. Uh, they're they're going to be a very difficult outfit, um, especially on the road to to hang with so we're going to need to play a lot better than we played this past weekend uh and i I expect them to like you said be pretty raring to go after getting that win last week they're going to be riding pretty high so it's going to take everything we got to go down to cedar city and figure out a way to get a win down there coach as we wrap up you know you do us a favor by coming on each and every week and and giving us your time and insight so i i'm trying i know there's no way to repay that debt but i'm going to try here um so, top 10 things to do in Cedar City. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have the uh, Shakespeare Festival. Don't Ooh. know if that's going on right now, but yeah. maybe take the team. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe a little uh, Romeo and Juliet yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, All the, right. the Frontier Homestead State Park Museum. Listen, Coach, you can discover the uh, early industrial history of Cedar City uh, through an extensive uh, horse-drawn <laughs> wagon collection that'd be great to have the offensive line yeah. on the horse drawn wagon. Larison would sure. like that. Yeah. <laughs> he would and, no uh, doubt. Yeah. and then if, <laughs> if you want to mix in sightseeing and maybe a, a good team workout the cedar city aquatic center uh of which uh, es290 at gmail.com says it's very clean with lots to do including a large <laughs> slide for older kids so you know maybe uh maybe i'll send you the link to this activities and, yeah activities you can show everybody on the plane and yeah there's tons of activities for you coach in beautiful cedar city utah well i think you know i was trying to figure out something to take my wife out on friday night you know so maybe we'll just go jump in the pool go on the water slide <laughs> and then you could celebrate maybe with a a nice bottle of some sort of utah based wine from the ig winery and go sit at the cedar breaks national monument that sounds romantic yeah. there you go yeah i mean she's i think she'd be excited about that right i mean so we got out we got her out of the house 
kids aren't there, that should be all right. It's a win. I got to be honest. My wife would love that. <laughs> Wine and mountains. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Uh, all right, coach. Well, good luck. Uh, kick some ass out there. Go Ags. And, of course, you can hear all that right here on your home of the Aggies, uh, Sackdown Sports with Scotty the Body Marsh on the call. Uh, great trip, safe trip, and we'll talk to you next week, Coach. I yeah, appreciate it, boys. Have a great week. Yeah. Find some joy. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, I did a game in Cedar City uh, many times, actually, yeah. but you actually called me on one of the games I had posted a picture, and you're like, is that real? Is that really the press box you were broadcasting I from? remember this. You that's had, there? That's in southern Utah. Wow. Yeah. It's an amazing view of, like, the red oh, mountains in the gorgeous. background. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. That was probably 10 years ago, I think you Maybe called I me. Maybe I take it back. Yeah. I, re- I, I specifically yeah, I like, well, remember. Yeah, Dave calling me? Yeah, it was like a Saturday yeah, afternoon. That yeah, that picture, yeah. I'm like, that's your view? Yeah. I also like, uh, is it? I don't know if it's Montana or Montana State, but one of them. Probably maybe. Montana. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just yeah. forget about it. Um, the Cold Creek Trail is a nice walk with family. Uh, 